Beyond the embassy closures in the Middle East, there are rapid developments coming out of the region that directly affect American national security. For starters, Iran has a new president who's perceived as a moderate, but the country still has dangerous nuclear ambitions. Then there's Egypt, a tender box of instability, and Syria's two-year-old civil war is as volatile as ever. We'll break it all down with a pair of expert guests who have extensive experience in the region. We are joined first today by Ambassador Ryan Crocker, who's on the phone with us from Texas. He was a U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan in 2011, and today he's the dean of the George Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M University. Thank you so much for being here uh, with us today on the phone, Ambassador Crocker. Thank you for having me. So I, I want to just start off. We've got 19 embassy closings uh, across the Middle East and North Africa. What is the significance of this? Well, first, uh, this is not a new phenomenon. Um, uh, we uh, close embassies periodically because of threat information. Uh, we've done so for years. Um, um, so, again, it's uh, it, it is not uh, it is not new. It's uh, I think got more attention because of the scope and because the administration decided to publicize it. Uh, um, uh, the significance uh, is uh, several fold. Uh, first, it demonstrates that uh, we have an, uh, an active and dangerous adversary still with uh, Al Qaeda. Um, but second, by publicizing this, we are signaling to Al Qaeda we're watching them, uh, we're on their communications. Um, uh, uh, and I think it's going to make them, uh, you know, more defensive and. Um, uh, was a good step. In, in terms of these embassy closing, what does this actually mean logistically? Are you pulling everyone out? Are you sending everybody home? What exactly does that look like? It means that the embassies uh, are not open uh, for public business. It um, doesn't mean that they're empty buildings. Certainly the entire security staff is uh, uh, present and uh, uh, on duty. Um, uh, and it doesn't mean that um, uh, the government's work is not getting done. Um, uh, diplomats routinely make calls on um, officials and other host country nationals. I would imagine that's going forward. Um, uh, the threats are against the embassies uh, as um, installations. Um, so that doesn't preclude, uh, and it's up to uh, each individual ambassador, uh, it does. It does not, in and of itself, preclude uh, uh, routine business uh, uh, from getting done. Visits to ministries, uh, you know, visits to businessmen, uh, uh, you know, other things that take place outside the embassy. And what does it mean when these embassies open back up? I think many of them will be closed through this week. And so, when they open back up, what is the situation there? Is it is the threat going to be diminished? Is the threat going to be there again? Uh, Al Qaeda has been uh, a threat, uh, you know, since uh, the 1998 East Africa bombings. Um, um, so there's nothing new there. Uh, as long as Al Qaeda exists, uh, it is going to be a threat. Uh, we have certainly diminished the effectiveness of Al Qaeda Central, if you will, in the Pakistan-Afghanistan border region, but it is heavily franchised. Uh, these threats seem to be emanating from al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. We also have al-Qaeda in Iraq, al-Qaeda in Syria, al-Qaeda in the uh, Arab Maghreb. Um, uh, they're all dangerous, and as, you know, as long as they exist, they are going to be a danger. And um, uh, again, nothing new in it. Uh, we just have to keep our guard up. Republican Senator uh, Lindsey Graham, who has been a big, big critic of this president post Benghazi, he talked about these embassy closures on Sunday. Take a listen. So I appreciate what the administration's doing. They're taking the right approach to this. Benghazi was a complete failure. The threats were real there. The reporting was real. And we basically dropped the ball. We've learned from Benghazi, thank God, and, and the administration's doing this right. 
What's your sense of where this administration is more broadly in terms of security of these embassies once they reopen? Um, I think the, uh, this administration, like its predecessors, is, is very, very serious about um, protecting diplomatic facilities and personnel. Um, uh, I was pleased to uh, note that um, uh, a bill has been introduced in the uh, Senate by the um, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the ranking member, uh, a bipartisan effort uh, for uh, additional security resources. Uh, that That's something the administration has pushed for. And uh, uh, at a time of um, intense polarization in American politics, I think this is something both, uh, both parties can agree on. Um, I, I have come out of two of our most critical threat posts, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and I can certainly uh, uh, tell you that under two different administrations, uh, uh, we had extremely good security. Uh, we, we lacked for nothing that we needed, um, uh, whether it was the Bush administration in Iraq or the Obama administration in Afghanistan. Thank you so much, Ambassador Crocker, for joining us today. We will certainly be watching to see what happens.